This is by far the juiciest and the best hazy IPA I have ever made. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly how we brew it. Let's get stuck into it. I'm Mikel T and this is Flying Wombat TV, the channel all about beer, banter and bloody good times. And yes, as you can tell by the title, this is part two of Man vs Machine, our little bit of a David vs Goliath mini-series where I take on the big bad AI robot, except it's really just me bringing my garage, trying to beat a recipe that was made by a computer. So it's not quite as epic, but we are going to be trying to beat the AI that beat us last time. Chat GPT. So let's start talking about the recipe. With this being my second attempt to go up against the Chat GPT recipe, I really, really wanted to think about it quite cleverly this time because I didn't want to lose again. So, with that being said, I think that I've got a much more complex and well rounded malt bill, which is composed of a, just a bit over 70% pale ale malt at 10, 10 and a half kilos, two kilos each of oat and wheat, which each together make up just under 30%. So I'm gonna have a much creamier, hopefully much silkier body, which really blends into that really juicy, um, you know, fruit forward style of beer. And I have also thought about the salt profile. I'm going for a two to one ratio of chloride to sulfate, which again, should hopefully accentuate all that juicy hoppiness rather than any of that bitterness that you'd get from like a West Coast style. And lastly, I do have a little bit of a secret weapon when it comes to one of the ingredients I've chosen or a couple of the ingredients, but I'll talk about them when we're getting a little bit further into the brew day. The last time that I went up against ChatGPT, my beer lost in one really critical area, body. So this time around, <clears throat> I'm making sure that I'm bringing body in spades. 72% of my grain bill is just gonna be regular pale ale malt, but the other 28% is gonna be made up in equal parts of oats and wheat. So there is 28% of my grain bill being all about malts that add creaminess, silkiness, and heaps of mouthfeel. So I'm gonna add these to the grain mill and we're gonna get crushing. Oh, actually, before I say anything else, if you're new to brewing these styles of beer with heaps of uh, oats and stuff, don't add the oats into the mill. Keep them separate, crush all your regular grains first, then add your, malt, uh, your oats back to the rest of your malts when you start whacking it into your strike water. They don't go through a mill, they don't mix. Let's get mashing, milling. <laughs> gonna be a long day. We have one more ingredient we are throwing into our mash that we have used a fair many times before, and that is rice hulls. If you haven't seen these or watched part one of this mini series, what are you doing? Go back to part one. But if you have or you haven't, you just don't know what this is, these things act like tiny little springs separating all the grains and making the water flow through a little bit easier, especially when you're working with a lot of oats and a lot of wheat, which are very high in proteins and things that like to clump up and make a bit of a gluggy stuck sparge. So these guys don't add any sugar, any color or any flavor to your beer, but they do add a whole lot of love to your life because you don't end up there for three hours trying to get all the water to flow through your grains. Yeast, the final ingredient in any day of good craft beer making. As I mentioned in part one of this series, I'm keeping the playing field very level. We are gonna be using American East Coast Ale Yeast, aka New England Yeast, because I know there are better strains out there for making a hazy IPA, but this one's pretty solid, and quite frankly, in Australia at the moment, it was the easiest one for me to get my hands on by the time we wanted to make this video. So we've made sure to make some nice healthy yeast starters for both of these beers one full day in advance of brewing them so that they really get cracking into fermentation nice and quick. Now for that all important salt profile for this man-made hazy IPA. It will be made up of 131 parts per million calcium, 15 parts per million magnesium, 15 parts per million sodium, 199 parts per million of chloride, 200 parts per million of sulfate. So that all important two to one ratio that I've been mentioning in my salt video and earlier in this recipe really helps with the creamy mouthfeel and emphasizing the maltier and fruitier flavors of the hops rather than the bitterness. And lastly, 57 parts per million of bicarbonate. I also do have one more secret weapon that I think is really gonna help me have an edge over the AI recipe this time around, but 
I'll leave that until a little bit later in the video. Sorry, we're doing the youtube stuff now. Before we fully get cracking into our brew day, I'm gonna go ahead and add all of my mash salts now so that they all get, it would help if I turn this on again, so they all get fully dissolved before we start mashing in all of our grains. Let's get this heated up for our strike temperature. I almost forgot, I need to drop some acid. Phosphoric acid, don't worry, we're not into that stuff just yet. But 4.5 mils of phosphoric acid into the mash to be exact. We are gonna be mashing in at 68 degrees Celsius for, we are just gonna keep it to one hour. I was kind of tempted to go a little bit longer just to allow full conversion, but there's so little specialties in here, I don't think it's actually gonna matter. So one hour, 68 degrees Celsius, obviously all the Imperial slash Freedom units are gonna be popping up all over the screen throughout this video. All right, let's give it a big mix. Oh, and we are using the extension on the malt pipe today because this is a pretty full mash. So I wasn't entirely sure how well it would all fit in the regular malt pipe. So we've extended it, which means I don't have my drainage malt um, overflow tube coming out through the middle. All right. And yes, I'm using a paint mixer because there is so much grain going into this one. It's technically 14 and a half kilos of grain, but 15 and a half with the rice hulls. And I just didn't feel like using the mash paddle for that. So paint mixer for the win. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> I need to get like one of those World War II gas mask looking things that all the tradies use. Cause I'm sure this shit is not good for my lungs. Now is as good a time as any to let you know what ABV we're going for with this. So I'm shooting for something in the realm of 7%. I'm not actually terribly fussed with what our final result is. I'm more concerned with our mouthfeel and our flavor on this particular beer. But, oh yeah, I'm switched over to the mash paddle so I can actually talk to you guys instead of hearing a power drill. But uh, yeah, this is gonna have a starting gravity of, I believe it was around 1.065 uh, or seven or something, according to Brewfather. And according to Brewfather, we're gonna end up around 1.017 in terms of final gravity, which is pretty high. So it, Brewfather's saying 6.8%. I'm gonna guess we're gonna finish slightly drier than that, so I reckon we'll probably end up around 7% ABV. We are now finished mashing in, so we're gonna next come back after an hour of mashing at 68 degrees Celsius, and then, by the way, an additional 10 minutes of uh, mash out. So I've got about a lag time of five minutes, heating up about this size liquid, so it's about 15 minutes total. Use a brewing calculator, it'll do it for you, but basically, Mash out means I'm gonna heat this up to 60 to 77 degrees Celsius, so that all enzyme activity ceases and we don't end up with a beer that's finishing at like, you know, zero gravity and it's way too dry. So start recirculating and then we'll come back in one hour and 15 minutes. Quick, we are now sparging and FYI, the sparge water is an acid sparge. So full recipe down below or you know, things will show up here. So there's phosphoric acid in here, as well as various salts, which make up the same salt profile in parts per million as the mash did. Just different volumes, obviously. So we are gonna run 30 liters of sparge water, which is, I think if memory serves, about, what is that, like nine gallons? I think I'm right. Um, over top of the uh, grain bed. So once all this drains through, we can start moving on to boiling. And that's when all the fun stuff begins. See you then. We're not boiling yet, but it is time to add our first wort hops. So if you're not familiar with this technique, basically means you're adding in your bittering hops before the boil has actually started. In doing so, the idea is you release a lot more of the hop oils and um, meant to provide a softer bitterness rather than such an intense regular style of bitterness, if that makes sense. It does make a little bit of a difference. So seeing as we're making a Nipa, I wanted to try and go for that softer mouthfeel of bitterness, which just works for the style. And that was 20 grams of Northern Brewer, by the way, for those of you keeping score at home. We'll be back when this is boiling. We are boiling. 
And I just now remembered, we don't have any boiling hops to add. So there's actually not a lot of point in filming this part. We are gonna add whirl flock, um, granulated whirl flock 15 minutes before boil finishes. That's about it. The next hops that are gonna come into this are gonna be whirlpool. So we'll see you then, where we're gonna cool this down to 75 degrees Celsius for those aroma hops. It's not an attractive sound when this pump starts spluttering, but we are now cooling down our man-made hazy IPA. So we're gonna bring this down to 75 degrees Celsius, at which point we're gonna throw in our Whirlpool hops. We're just running this through the, um, the plate chiller for today while the chat GPT, as you saw last week, was running on the counter flow. We'll be back in a sec when we're ready to add hops. It is now time to add our Whirlpool hops and introduce the secret weapon that I talked about at the start of this video. We are gonna be going in with 50 grams each of Sabro, Amarillo, uh, El Dorado, Citra, Sabro, Amarillo, what have I said? Sabro, Amarillo, Citra, El Dorado, and I just blanked. I just did this off camera and I've just forgotten what it was. <laughs> Damn it, what is it? It'll be up here on the screen. It'll be up on the screen, <laughs> but, the secret weapon for why I think my hazy is gonna be better than last week's chat GPT is all of these are Lupo Max hops. I've used them a few times on the channel before. If you're not familiar with them, they're kind of like cryo hops. What they do is they are artificially engineered to hold way more alpha acids, way more beta acids, way more hop oils, so that these things are basically like supercharged hops. They're like extra versions of the original varieties, which means way more juice in every single pellet. And I think that's gonna make this one a real, real tasty neeper. By the way, the reason I've chosen so many hops, because I haven't mentioned it, is because you get more complexity of flavor when you layer multiple hops on top of each other. Like Citra on its own, heaps of tropical fruit and citrus. El Dorado, heaps of stone fruit and like kind of like uh, peaches and like uh, pears, uh, not pears, wrong flavor, but you know what I mean, and candy kind of flavors. The idea is when you layer multiple hops on top of each other, the complexity of that fruit juice flavor just emphasizes each other and it makes it way, way juicier. We're gonna let this sit in here for 20 minutes at 75 degrees Celsius, and at the end of that, we're gonna cool this down to yeast pitching temperature. Be back then. All right, we are now transferring. So we are down at yeast pitching temp as it's coming off the spout through the chiller. We're gonna transfer down into our big uh, Brewtech fermenter now. That's always a beautiful shot as it first starts coming into the tank, I love that. Now, we just gotta transfer all this over, pitch some yeast, and then the next time you see us after that will be when we're dry hopping. We'll take a video of the yeast. Okay, well then you're gonna see us in a second. <laughs> <laughs> Unclick. Unclick. <laughs> this, by the way, is my brewer's vibrator. <laughs> Can you hear it? <laughs> no, it's, just, yeah, it's just a little aquarium pump so it's pumping oxygen through the carbonation stone in here giving the you know the batch a little more oxygen before we pitch our yeast i'll do the same thing for the snub nose as well just as with the chat gpt from last episode we are going to be fermenting with the same yeast that new england um american east coast yeast from lowland and we're gonna ferment at 25 degrees Celsius. Only difference between this and the ChatGBT one is I actually have temperature control. So it will absolutely be 25 degrees Celsius. Let's whack that in. I can't really do this in a way that gives you a good shot. Go the other way. <laughs> Too late. <laughs> I'm pouring now. No. Go over my head. My good shot. <laughs> there we go. Oh, this is highly sexual. <laughs> They can't see. <laughs> well, they don't know can't hurt them. <laughs> All right, that's done. Uh, you will see me next when I dry hop this. I'm going to dry hop mine around final gravity, so I suspect about a week from now. See you then. It is now day seven of fermentation, and we are ready for this 50 gram edition each of, oh, what was it again? It was Savro, Citra, Mosaic, El Dorado, and Amarillo, I remembered it this time. Uh, so that's a good, healthy 250 grams of dry hops or you know half a pound for the Americans out there that are gonna go into our zero oxygen dry hopper. So I'm gonna whack those in now. I'll also chat about what I've done to the tank and why it's all condensation-y while I do this. I've been 
Thinking about playing around more with what temperatures I am dry hopping at recently, and I've heard a lot of good things about soft crashing before actually throwing in your hops when you do your big heavy dry hop additions. Oh my God, I almost dropped them all. In you go. Nice, oh, I love a big hop load. Um, so, soft crashing, it's basically a, uh, a gentle cold crash. So instead of bringing your beer down to, you know, like one degree or as close to zero degrees Celsius as possible, you bring it for something like a pale ale down to around say like 14 degrees Celsius, which is cold enough that yeast activity is effectively stored, like it's, it's halted, it's paused, it's stalled. And uh, all that shrub and sediment can start to settle down into a cone down at the bottom of the tank. For which you can see like this cloudiness going on here. That's a lot of shrub and stuff that's starting to settle at the bottom. I've already done a yeast dump. So I've taken about a liter out, which means there is much clearer wort sitting up in here. So when I drop these hops in, A, it's gonna um, not be having as much interaction with all the trube and all the yeast, which can cause some off flavors. But B, because this is soft crash now, that yeast is gonna not start fermenting the minor amounts of sugar that are gonna be coming in through this dry hop. Therefore, we are not going to get hop creep. Hop creep is where your fermentation is finished, or at least you think it's finished. You throw your hops in, and then because you're throwing those hops in, and hops do have residual amounts of sugar, it kicks off a secondary fermentation that you weren't prepared for. Can sometimes cause some off flavors, as well as over carbonating your beer, if you've like done this right before packaging, for example. The only downside of doing this soft crash is it means that this beer must be cold forever. It's not allowed to warm up again, otherwise I could end up receiving some hop creep. But that's fine because these kegs, once it is kegged, are just gonna sit inside the, uh, the bar forever. So it's not really a problem for me. I'm not distributing this stuff yet. Now that should be just about enough purging of the dry hops up here and we should be ready to go hops away. All right, let's do it. And we're clear. That is done. So I'm gonna leave this at 14 degrees Celsius for one more day. Then I'm gonna begin cold crashing and I'm just gonna start dumping out all those hops as quickly as I can after that. Then we're gonna rack this thing into our kegs. And now the next time that you guys see us is when we're gonna be tasting these two hazies and seeing which came out on top. So I'll see you guys then. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you next week. See you guys.